Let's go. Let's go. We are now on our way to Midtown Classics. Fortunately, we're running a little bit late, so we'll try our best to actually reconnect with our group. Well, we're not totally late, but we are kind of late. We'll let you know about it later. Till then. <laughs> we are here. We are exploring. What are we exploring? Midtown Classics. Yeah, that's right. Midtown Classics. So, fun fact Midtown Classics. Midtown Classics. <laughs> Booyah. <laughs> Fun fact, I guess, number whatever. We just found out that one of the reasons why we can't really go into the public buildings as of this moment is since 9-11, they've been a complete shutdown due to number one, they don't want to have grounds for being sued for basically anything. So that's why it's like, okay, we'll take no risks. We won't let anybody in instead. And number two, suspicious terrorism activity, which sucks actually. We'll make the best of it anyways. See you guys soon was and it might still be the tallest residential building in the world 432 park avenue the penthouse sold for 95 million bucks for one apartment um, i want to be a billionaire Walking around feels like you're in a cinematic capital of the world, especially the long corridors of skyscrapers lining up and you recognize many of the landmarks from movies. It's somewhat of a wonderful chaos walking and wandering about. Our tour guide Stefan would explain that the first rule in tall buildings is that you want to make them as low as possible. You don't want to go high because every time you add a floor you have to add areas for elevators and corridors for the people living there. The lower the building is, the more area you would be able to use for your building. Whether if you would rent it, have it sold, leased out, or whatever you do, always try to make a tall building low.
This is the center of the fourth largest library system in the whole world. And for those who grew up during the 80s can recognize that the movie Ghostbusters was actually filmed here. It has also been declared as a natural historic landmark in 1965. Just right outside, you have the beautiful Bryant Park. Next up in our tour was the Grand Central Station. It has the biggest basement in New York City and home to more platforms than any other railroad station across the globe. You could fit half the Brooklyn Bridge down there. Also known in many movies as much frequented location, it caters to over 20 million commuting locals and visitors each year. Well, we are now here at the Grand Central Station. This is actually more like magnificent than you would actually ever come to ever think of. Kind of reminds me of the St. Peter's Church, kind of a miniature of it. It's just that we are okay. Okay, group is actually lost. I need to go. Okay, see you soon. Then I'll hide to get sick. Followed by a conference at Hotel Pennsylvania, we attended a seminar on infrastructure of the public realm by Greg from Grimshaw, which is a big part of what the company does. So nature, technology and design. He talked about biomimicry, what we learn from nature and how nature relates to technology is critical for design. Transit and pedestrian accessibility. Fulton Center was one of the projects that went through some serious improvements from how it was before to how it is now. So a short preface to this is that the new New York City subway system was built by many competing private companies before it was consolidated and made public. This was an example of the anonymity of New York City and the anxiety it could produce with the 300,000 people coming through it every single day thus creating a need to solve, coordinate, and connect all the individual subway lines that was a mess to begin with. So one way was bringing in reflective light from the canyon-like surrounding buildings and capitalizing it, creating a sense of place and opening it up in a way that it didn't have before. Industrial design in the public realm. Scrimshaw was also focused on doing streetscape components in New York City. Here they have a multi-purpose solution where they combine a bike rack and a stormwater drainage. Culture is anchor. The Penn Station project is a good example where the culture was used as an anchor for the design. Lastly, we also went through the urban architecture. Some of the project that was shown was Via Verde at the Bronx, New York City. An example of creating community spaces where people tend to cross paths and meet other people. The Mosaic Hunters Point, South Housing, Queens, New York City. Yorkville Square, Toronto, Canada, where the main goal was to enhance the pedestrian connectivity. They then came out with a solution, looking something like this. Continuing on, our Head of Sustainability gave us an update on what's happening regarding Sueco's role in the society, the coming sustainability projects focus on solutions, and what it means for us as an organization. Lastly, Sueco Orison's Regional Director gave a roundup briefing on how we are as a company and where we are heading and the purpose of this trip. 
Here it can be depicted in the form of a camel's back in a sectioning view providing a wide range of different projects on different locations with constant challenges coming up. He urged us to recognize the urban areas in correlation to how we have it here in Malmo. Although our small populated Malmo with around 300,000 people only is a fraction of New York City's 8.6 million people, that's the total population of Sweden by the way, but there are many vantage points in New York where we can draw inspiration and employ implementing it in terms of infrastructure, urban planning, and design. There are simply more similarities than we think. And this is why we are here, to sharpen our visions and aspire to new heights. Skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna be myself, I'm gonna be someone else. I'm gonna be myself, I'm gonna be someone else. I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes. Try not to hold me down, feel alive when I'm in this town. Nothing can break me, no, no, nothing can break me. 
Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this episode as it concludes the Swick of Architects in New York City series. Please leave a like and hit the subscribe button for more future content. And we'll see you again very soon.